Is this one of those weeks where you just kind of wrap a picture of Metcalf in a in a present thing and hand it to uh, to uh, Bradbury and say your problem? <laughs> I, um, I wish things could be that simple, but no. Um, I mean, aside from uh, Metcalf, I mean they got so many different weapons. I mean, the backs, you know, I mean Hyde and Carson. These guys are, you know, they they're scary. The quarterback, obviously, I've you know. He's a scary player, good player. I've known him since he was a you know young kid. His brother played for us at Richmond when I was there. But and then you know they got so many weapons. You know from the receiver spots. You know 83, 16, 14. They're all making plays. So you know we're going to try to figure it out. Do what we could do. Uh, see what we could do to try to limit their effectiveness. But you know we're going to need more than just James. We're going to need everybody, all hands on deck for this one because they got a lot. Of, they got a lot of weapons out there. Thank you. Yep. Hey, Pat, with uh, with Russell's deep balls, I mean, it seems like it's unique with how much air he puts under them. And you know, why is he so effective throwing those? Well, I, I mean, I'm sure you could probably dive into the physics of it, but I, I don't know. But I, I assume it gives those guys with the trajectory, you know, it's similar to Aaron when Aaron throws those deep balls and everybody's like, wow, you know, Aaron Rodgers, when everybody makes those catches on those Hail Marys. But um I assume it's from years of practice, timing with the receivers, uh, give them a chance to get underneath the ball. They're all pretty fast, so and he has the arm strength to get it down the field. The O line is doing a good job of blocking for him and giving him time to get it out there. But I would assume something to do with the trajectory helps out with it. But I'm not smart enough to figure that out. <laughs> Tom Rock. Pat, what's your philosophy on using a spy on a quarterback like Russell and, and maybe even next week uh, on, on another mobile quarterback? And, and what do you look for in, in the qualities of a player that you might use in that role? I mean, you know, each game plan is so different. I mean, <laughs> I could tell you stories of using a spy before and the spy didn't tackle the quarterback and, you know, the spy wasn't good enough to get the quarterback. <laughs> so, I mean, like, you know, I mean, so you try to you try to figure out the guys, the best guys to tackle them. They obviously got to be able to tackle. They got to be able to run. But, you know, you alternate between the two. You try to teach um, discipline pass rush. You know, if you're rushing four or five, just trying to fill up the pass rush lanes. And then sometimes you might get specific and have a, a particular person spy on them. And what you're looking for, you're looking for somebody that can tackle, someone that has the speed to stay with them. And they have to have some savviness about them too because, you know, some, sometimes when you talk to a player about what a spy is, they just sit back there and now you just gave the quarterback more space. The line of scrimmage changes, you know what I mean? So, like, just in terms of just talking football, as the line of scrimmage changes, like certain people have philosophy, that spy or that mirror player has to close the line of scrimmage. Some people stay back there, you know, but to me, you know, it's, you got to pick, pick your poison. Do you want to have more space so you can have vision or do you want to close so he can get to him quicker when it declares? So those are some of the things you got to look at when you're going through it. That. Hey, Pat. Um, Leonard Williams right now is on, is on track to uh, have a career high in sacks. I'm just wondering, like, what, what's it been like for you coaching Leonard in general and kind of wh where do you see it? Where have you seen him make the most strides since you first got here? Well, I, I think, you know, just having watched him from afar, I mean, the biggest thing for me, anytime you're dealing with the big guys, I want to see what he's doing versus the run. And I think that, you know, Leo's been doing a solid job against the run. You know, he would be the first one to tell you he could do better um, in both the run and the pass. But the thing that stands out for me with Leo is his, his personality is it's infectious, like the energy, um, the way he attacks it. Each day is new. He attacks the day. He's pretty diligent working through that. Um, he wants to get better. Um, he's taking the coaching to heart, you know, that Spence gives him, um, that Joe gives him. And really, he, he's, just, he's just really being a sponge in terms of trying to learn football, trying to uh, perfect his craft, trying to become the best NFL defense alignment he could be. And, you know, and the part of that is if you want to be the best, you got to realize that you're not there yet. No matter what, what year, what, what year you're in your career or how many sacks, how many TFLs, you're not there yet. And he's attacking it like that, I believe. And, uh, and Nico Lalas is a guy that, uh, you know, came in from the Ivy League like you. But what, 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 is he, what has he done to impress not, you? Not, not, not like me. He played. I did not play. I keep telling you. <laughs> okay, touche. But, uh, <laughs> but, you know, he, the, the um, other position coaches were talking about how he's, like, been able to bounce between different positions and he's been really diligent and all that. Like, what, what, is, what has impressed you about him? The thing, he, I mean, here's the easiest thing, and it's simple. He paid attention when Joe went through the first meeting. The more you can do, the better off you'll be. 
I mean, it's not a surprise. He's around here because he listened to what the head coach told him. <laughs> I mean, that that's I mean, you want to make it simple. Yeah, did he change his body in the weight room and nutrition and all that stuff? Has he become like uh, has he worked hard with his skill set? Yeah, absolutely. All that stuff, the football stuff. But simply put, he listened to what the head coach said. The head coach said the more you can do, the better off you'll be, provided value, the chance to stick around. And he just listened to Joe. I mean, just like I try to listen to Joe. That's what you got to do. <laughs> when you got a head coach, you listen to the head coach, and you try to do, um, make his job easier, and you try to, you know, try to do what's best for the team. That's what he did. Thanks. Mm -hmm. We'll take more Ed Schwartz and Kenneman. Ed. Hey, Pat, I want to go back to Metcalf for yeah. a second. Um, Jerome said the other day, we asked Jerome about how you defend the guy, and he basically said, you just hope the pass rush gets home. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it really that simple? And, you know, who does Metcalf remind you of in terms of guys you've, you've coached against? Specifically? Oh, man. I mean, I – I, I was not prepared for that one. Like, who comes to mind? Again, I'm going to just mention big wide receivers, and then I'll go watch the tape. Like, oh, he's not actually that guy. But um, in terms of being able to catch the ball deep, I mean, yeah, there's so many big receivers that I've gone against, you know, um, you know Julio, you know, uh, Calvin Johnson since I've been in the league, you know, Des Bryant when he was doing it. I can't specifically tell you, Ed, exactly who he reminds me of exactly. He's such a unique talent, in my opinion. Um, the size, the ability to block in the run game, that's one that stands out for me. He's actually a point of attack blocker. Like you would say, uh, the left side of the line is a point of attack, or right side of the line is a point. He's a point of attack blocker in the run game. That stands out to me. So I think what we got to do, we got we to gotta make it tough on him. We got to make it tough on him, whether it's you know playing off coverage, press coverage, um, when he goes to block, get our hands on him. Um, but, I mean, he's a unique talent. He's going to find a way to get open. That's the, that's the nature of it. You know, these guys are really good. Um, they get coached, too, and Russ does a good job of finding them. You know, Schottenheimer, they do a good job of scheming it up for them. But is it as simple as the pass rush? I wish, I wish, I wish. I do hope the pass rush gets there, but we're going to have to, we're going to, have to play ball and figure out what's best for that when we get to Sunday. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Patrick. What's up? Hey, um... What's your philosophy on talking to players, uh, opposing players before games? You know, I know some guys like to chat, some guys don't. Um, um, Jim Schwartz tried it, uh, tried to give Metcalf a compliment last week, and uh, Metcalf didn't take it that way. I mean, do you chat up these guys? Uh, do you uh, pump them up? Do you ignore them? What do you do? Well, with the COVID thing, is a little bit different, you know, just like – but if it's guys that I've coached before, you know, usually those are defensive players. So, you know, they're on the other side. We're not even going against them. But I'll say hi and greet them. And then usually it starts with like a text message before the game or, you know, earlier in the week. But um, I'm not – before, if you saw me down, if you guys were on the field and saw me, I'm not really talking. I'm not really – this is about as much talking as I do all week. I'm not the most talkative person. So before the game, I'm, not, I'm, I'm barely talking to our guys. So, <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not one to chat with the play. And that's not me. I'm not going to talk smack. That's not me. I'm not, you know, I guess, uh, yeah, I'm not a big talker for the most part. I'm pretty quiet. Did you hear about that interplay between Jim Schwartz and Metcalf? Did you hear what happened with that? No, I did not. No, I'm, I'm bad. I'm, t I'm sorry. I'm just... No, <laughs> when you're dealing with all these guys we have to deal with, I mean, I don't have time. That and my wife and kids, that's about it. <laughs> Take a look it up. You'll find it interesting, I all bet. Right. That's one here, Canada. Hey, Patrick. Um, how did uh, Xavier do? I mean, or how much progress is he making now that he's back? Oh, he, he's doing a good job. He's doing a good job. And, you know, we just have to be careful, you know, like his first game last week, and now he's got an opportunity this week. And we'll see if the role increases, you know. But, I mean, the, the kid is – sorry, I didn't mean to call him a kid. The young man is doing a good job of studying. Um, he's practicing well. I mean, the one thing that stands out for me is his ability to tackle and go through the tackling drills and really execute that. That's something that, you know, I told him, I said, even though without that time, you're doing a good job working on that. So he's doing a good job with that.